a circuit finder, a circuit identifier called Circuit Detective for 20 bucks. Will it work? Let's find out. It does not come with batteries. You will need to install one 9 volt battery. The $20 was not included. I inserted it for special effects. The packaging is made to open so you can reuse it. It's going to be a good storage container for it. It is two prong, which is pretty nice. They are each labeled. One is receiver, the other is transmitter. The transmitter is powered off the 120 volt live circuit. Several of the bad reviews I've read online are from people who thought this would work on a dead circuit. This requires a live 120 volt circuit. Actually, it's gotta be from 90 volts to 120. And if it's a little over, it's okay. But it gets its power from the live circuit. There's no battery in this. The red LED should come on. We'll quickly find out. Also, these units are rebadged. I know there's three or four companies that are rebadging their name. How about this at Harbor Freight for $19.99 plus tax? We're going to find out if it works. The number one screwdriver. We got two firm snaps on the battery. Okay. Have to be careful inserting the battery. Everything's plastic. What do you expect for $20, huh? If it works, it's going to be awesome. Okay, according to the instructions, we're going to plug him in. This circuit is live, and we should be getting a red LED. You can't see it from this angle, guys, but if you get down low, it's a bright red LED down here. It's midday out, and it's like 90 degrees. So we'll set up inside and see if it works. I wanted to show you this, too, on the voltage, just to show you it is live. 123 volts. Okay, the receptacle we're trying to find is located just on the other side of this brick wall. The meter is straight across. The receptacle follows straight down. It's just an outside receptacle. We're in a dark closet with a, a light hanging up off to the side. And turn it on. What the instructions want you to do is scan it. They don't care if you start top left or bottom. They don't care which corner you start at. They want you to start, pick a spot, and scan it. Do a full sweep and then do it again. The second time should be enough to identify the circuit. But from what I've read, sometimes a third sweep is required. Now what's going on when you first sweep it, you're going to hear a lot of the breakers make noise. That's because the outside transmitter, this is a receiver, the transmitter is injecting a signal on that live circuit, something other than 58 to 61 hertz. This is tuned to pick that up. A lot of these circuits in here have noise over and above that. You might call it like a static. And this is going to null some of that sound out, some of that noise out. This is going to find that steady frequency that's being injected from the transmitter. It's similar to ground balance in a metal detector. Let's try it. We'll start at the upper left. I don't know how this is going to show up. A lot of noise. That was 220s. That 220 is off. That 220 is off. Okay. We'll follow instructions and sweep it again. It's identifying this guy. It's a 15 amp too. Okay, we'll do it again. Second sweep, and handily pick this guy here out. Carport, that would make perfect sense. I'm sorry to see it's only a 15 amper. It picked it out a second time. So we will kill him, and we'll go out and check it. Number 12, carport. Press and hold, and she's off. Okay, we lost our red LED to indicate no power. She's dead. For $20, it works, and I think it works good. If you still have too much 
what I call static, where you get too many, if you have too many false alarms, it wouldn't hurt a thing to sweep it a third time. We swept it a third time and it still indicated the correct breaker. Okay, that breaker we just ran a circuit identifier on. Our panel's right on the other side of that. So what we're gonna do now is stretch out to about 60 to 70 feet. We're gonna locate a circuit. Stay with me. Okay, this is clear on the opposite end of the house. This is about 70 feet. And we have our red LED. Let's go try to find it. Okay, we'll turn that breaker we just tested back on. We'll start to sweep lower right this time. Third one from the right bottom. Third one from the right bottom is bath lights, fans hall, and master BR. That's it. To the master bedroom, the very back wall. We correctly identified it. Perfect. Okay, I just want to go over some afterthoughts here. Very few tools exceed my expectations for the money spent. In this case, it was $20 plus tax. I'm very impressed with this tool to the point I'm going to take the battery out because all you do is bump this and it's going to come on. And if you put it in your, even your shirt pocket or a, in your tool bag, one of the biggest complaints is it's coming on all the time. And then if you push the button, it will not go off. You'll hear it, maybe, if you're going down the road and send it back to your truck or in the trunk of your car. You may not hear it. So you have to push it and hold it for about three seconds for it to go off. So I'm going to pop the battery back out. You just have to be careful. Yeah, there is a brass inserted nut molded within the plastic here. Okay, in the closet it was a little dark. I don't know how much the auxiliary light was really reflecting on there, and then my angle it wasn't really good, but when it does light up, this green arrow will light up. But I just wanted to point out to you, it's going to be hard for you to get onto the wrong circuit breaker, because if the circuit breaker is on, and you get a live circuit, before you do any outside work or inside work, you need to kill the breaker and confirm it with a, a multimeter or a line tester. But what I wanted to show you was while it's on, the width of these breakers. This is what we was scanning inside my house. This thing is, is almost as wide as the breaker. And when it was coming on, in all the cases in there, it was right about in here. And then the LED would flash, the green arrow. And as soon as you got off, it would go off. So it's gonna come on here. It's gonna be easy to detect which breaker the device is telling you is being triggered. So I just want to point that out. I also want to point out for the money, uh, people are complaining it does no good because it will not test a dead circuit like in wiring a new house. And again, the line has to be energized. It has to have between 90 and 120 volts on it. Now they say 120, but a lot of lines have 123. We remodeled a house for the last month. The voltage is running as high as 129 volts. At steady state, it's like 127.7.9. That's as high as I've ever seen on a residential. This is inside the city limits. Very few tools that I buy exceed my expectations of the money spent. To me, this is, I've said this before, this is a, a heck of a value for $20. Now, I don't know how long it's gonna last, that's the thing. But on the other hand, you don't have two or $300 invested in it if the smoke comes out of it in three or four months. So I'm gonna put it back in the package and, and be happy with it. Well, you didn't see me read the instructions because I read them online. Like I said, you can reuse this blister pack. That's pretty cool. And then I want to talk about the technology in it. It's telling you right here, the difference is the technology. If you flip it over, digital calibration, that's the noises that it's making when you first do your, when you do your first sweep. That's the digital calibration going on, or if you've ever handled a metal detector, that's the same thing as a ground balance. 
It's the same thing as electronics filtering out unwanted noise, zeroing in on the wanted noise. And if you're wanting something to find dead circuits, you're going to have to get into spending quite a bit more money because there's more technology involved. And a lot of those devices that start at uh, six and seven hundred dollars and run on up to fifteen hundred dollars, they come with a lot of accessories. But I've also noticed that they will do 220 volts. I uh, did not try this on 220 because the receiver is made for 110. So I'm not, I'm not concerned about 220. You don't have that many 220 volt breakers in your house to try to track down anyway. They're relatively easy to track down, but you could have a lot of 120 volt circuits. But what you get into on the expensive circuit tracers, a lot of times they're called circuit tracers because they're not energized, is you get into, like I say, the 220 volt, and you'll get into the three phase. And any time you talk three phase, you're talking money. Any time you get into three phase, you're getting into commercial. And when you get into commercial, you better get your wallet out because it's going to take some money to do what you want to do. Well, that's been my experience with it. I hope it helps. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask in the comment section. I will answer all questions. It might take me up to a couple of weeks. But I'll get to them as fast as I can. If you need to know any more information on this device, I'll tell you what I know. But this came from Harbor Freight for $20 plus tax. Uh, I'm going to put it up until I need it next time. I may not need it for a while, maybe several months. That's why I went ahead and popped the battery out of it. And thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. And please subscribe. And as usual, on any tool or electronic device, your mileage may vary. Thanks again.